Hallelujah. I want to thank and praise Yahweh Almighty, the one who sits high and looks low on me. And I count it a privilege to stand before you today and bring forth his word. And I pray that it will be edifying to all who hear. So I'm really excited about the fact that I have been adopted into the family of Yahweh. I mean, think about that for a second. You have been adopted into the family of Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth, the sovereign one, the omnificent one. I mean, y'all aren't excited about that? Do you know who you are? You are heir to Yahweh Almighty, joint heir with Yahshua. That don't excite you? Oh, my goodness. I'm excited. I'm adopted into the family of the Most High. Hallelujah. And as a child of the Most High, Yahweh has shown his favor on me and given me a spiritual family, as he has done for all of you. We are a spiritual family. Now, of all the groups and organizations and things that you can belong to in this life, this one is the most significant because it has eternal value. This is the most important group to belong to, the bride of Yeshua Messiah, the bride that he's coming back to receive. This is the most important organization or group to belong to. When we come to church, our church family should be a source of encouragement. It should be a blessing to us. Amen? We should feel the love. We should feel acceptance. This should be a sanctuary for our weary souls. Amen? We should come in here and be able to get the answers to all of life's problems. This is Yahweh's idea. See, he gave us each other because he knew we were going to need some help along the way at some point in time or another. He knew that we were going to have struggles. He knew that the enemy was going to come against us. And he shores us up with each other. Amen? Yeshua says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah? It's a privilege and a blessing to have a spiritual family. And the reality is sometimes your spiritual family is better for you than your natural family. See, it's easier to travel with your spiritual family because you're traveling on the same road. You have the same goal. You have the same blessing and promise afforded you. It's difficult walking with family who's on the broad way. See, as you grow in Yahweh, y'all are getting further and further and further apart. So your spiritual family is truly the family that matters. Amen? Amen? Now, though it is a blessing and a privilege, I want you to know that as a part of the family, it's also a responsibility. Yahweh has expectations for us as members of his spiritual family. And he will help us not only learn how to love him, but how to love each other. How about that? See, we know the two great commandments, love Yahweh with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and the second is love your neighbor as yourself, right? A lot of people don't have problems loving Yahweh. Of course, we don't always love him the way we should or completely, you know. We don't have the agape love for him that he has for us, but we kind of get the love for Yahweh. But when it comes to loving each other, this is where we have some struggle. It's hard to love each other, isn't it? With all of our faults and flaws and shortcomings all of our little schisms and quirks and irritations. It's hard sometimes to love one another. But we are one body with many parts, and we are only as strong as our weakest link. So we must work together to build each other up so that we can collectively stand against the enemy's attacks, so that we can collectively bring glory to Yahweh's name, so that we can collectively be a light in the world of darkness, we must grow together. Amen? We must grow in unity so that our body as a whole can thrive and serve the purpose for which Yahweh called us to. The ultimate prize of being glorified in the Father. Heirs with Yahweh, joint heirs to the Son. Scripture commands us to love one another, to admonish one another, to bear each other's burdens, to forgive one another, 
to encourage one another, to confess to one another, to strengthen one another, to hold each other accountable, to be subject one to another, to edify one another. You look up the one another scriptures, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we are supposed to be doing to one another. Amen? Today I want to focus on edification, how to edify one another. Now we all know that edify means to build up, right? And I think that in our assembly there are those who do edify, and there are those who edify and don't realize they're edifying, and then there are those who are really not concerned about edifying. So today I want to break down what edification is so that we can get on board and build the tabernacle that Yahweh himself will dwell in the midst of. Amen? So edify is, comes from the Greek word oikodomio. This word occurs 39 times in the original text, and all except eight times it is translated as build or built. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Paul says, this is when he's talking about the coming of Yeshua. You know, this passage is about the return of Yeshua. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, he says, Therefore, encourage, admonish, exhort one another, and edify, strengthen and build up one another just as you are doing. So basically what Paul has in mind here is that as Christians in the faith, being part of one body, we should work to build one another up in faith. In Thayer's lexicon, after defining the word, it says, Edification is the act of one who promotes another's growth in Christian wisdom, piety, holiness, and happiness. In Vine's expository dictionary, the word is used metaphorically in the sense of edifying, promoting the spiritual growth and development of character of believers by teaching or by example, suggesting such spiritual progress as the result of patient labor. As a part of Yahweh's family, a part of the church, we have a responsibility to edify or build each other up. Out in the world, there's all kinds of things coming against us. This is a violent world that we live in, wicked and perverse, spirits of lust and oppression and anger and hatred and racism and all kinds of things coming against us. And it's very easy for us as believers to fall into the world's way of thinking. Very easy. So being able to come together and build each other up and edify one another is pertinent. It is crucial for your survival spiritually that you can come here and get what you need to go out there and stand against the attack of the enemy. We should look forward to Yahweh's Sabbath day as an opportunity to rest our weary souls from all that's happening out there, as an opportunity to come into a safe place where we can be loved on and built up and encouraged. We should look forward to this every single week. If we come into the house of Yahweh and we hear the same old murmuring and complaining that we hear out there, if we have the same old gossiping and, and hurt feelings and judging and critical spirit and all of those things within the church, where then is our sanctuary? When we come into Yahweh's house where the name of Yahweh is blessed, not cursed, we can be refreshed, revived, renewed, restored, rebuilt. Amen? It's a time of refreshing. We come together to build up each other in faith. We can be used by Yahweh to build, or we can be used by Satan to destroy. I was having a conversation with Pastor Beth last night. She was talking about how it's so much easier to tear down. It's so much easier to destroy. It's a lot harder to build something. What can take people like years to build can be destroyed in days. Destroyed in days. So destruction is not hard. Destruction is what comes naturally to this flesh. We don't have to work at tearing stuff down at all. It comes naturally. But building up, edifying one another, showing the love, bearing each other's burdens, giving an encouraging word, this is a move of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's where that comes from. 
it's much easier for us to burn things down than to build things up. So the question today is, do you consider yourself a builder or a burner? Because as a child of the Most High, there's only one option. Nowhere in Scripture does it tell us to destroy one another. Nowhere in Scripture does it tell us to tear each other down. Nowhere in Scripture does it tell me to steal your little bit of joy, your little bit of peace, your little bit of hope. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that. We are called to edify or build each other up. So today what I want to talk about is how exactly do we do that? How do we edify one another? So the first thing I want to look at, which is probably to me the most important way to edify one another, is our example. Remembering that the definition of edify is promoting the spiritual growth of another. Think about your behavior. How do you think your behavior impacts the church? How do you think your behavior affects other believers in the body? Do you think you're a good example or a bad example? Do you think you're building up the body or burning down the body? Are you an encourager or a discourager? Your example is the most important way to edify the body. In other words, do you practice what you preach? Do you put application to your knowledge? Do you walk in the spirit? Do you allow your conversation to be ordered by Yahweh and your decision making and your steps? Are you a light amongst the brethren? Do you forgive or do you forsake? Isn't it easier to just cut somebody off who wrongs you? That's easy, right? I'm done with you. And you move on. But forgiveness is what the scripture requires. Amen? And forgiveness is hard. But forgiveness is building up. Forsaking is burning down. Right? Do you give Yahweh your praise when there's chaos in your life? Do you give him the praise? Or do you murmur and complain? Do you walk in the peace that passes understanding or do you succumb to the chaos in your life? Do you walk in joy unspeakable when things don't go your way or do you get miserable and mean and nasty? See, that's the difference between building up and edifying and tearing down and destroying. Amen? I have a personal example. Somebody who built me up who didn't even, weren't even aware that they were building me up at the time. I'm talking about Micah's mom, Norma. Sister Norma was a virtuous woman, loved Yahweh, loved him and was faithful to him. And in the end of her life, she got pancreatic cancer, terminal illness. And pancreatic cancer is terrible. It's a painful cancer. You suffer physically in your body. I'm going to tell you, she knew she was dying. And she was feeling the pain every day. But the people in the church never would have known it. You never would have known she was dying. You never would have known she was suffering. Because in the midst of her suffering, she praised Almighty Yahweh. She praised Him with every fiber of her being. When people came to her house to pray with her, she prayed for them. When people came to our house to lift up her spirits, she lifted up their spirits. She was a light to the end. She did not murmur. She did not complain. She did not say, why is this happening to me? I'm faithful, Yahweh. I served you all my life. I do everything you require of me. Why? Why do you allow me to get such a horrible illness? Why am I suffering? She never said it. She never said it. She praised Yahweh in the midst of her suffering. She edified me to this day. I thought about my life. I thought about the little things in my life that could be a distraction to me serving Yahweh. The little things that upset me. The little things that throw me off course. The little things that are a distraction. The little things that I murmur and complain about. The little things that make me want to forsake Yahweh. And here this woman who served Yahweh her whole life faithfully gets cancer and walks in the glory of Yahweh. Hallelujah. She edified me. She built me up. 
She grew me up spiritually. She matured me. She made me put things in right perspective. She was a builder of faith, a builder of saints. Hallelujah. We all need that type of thing in our life. We don't want to become a stumbling block for the brethren. A stumbling block is a conduct that is offensive, actions that hurt or discourage another. We don't want to be a stumbling block. We want to be a stepping stone. Norma was a stepping stone for me. I can look to her example and see where I need to get to, see where I need to be, see that Yahweh's still on the throne no matter what the situation looks like, that my joy in him is just that, in him, and it don't matter what's happening down here, that my peace that passes understanding, it's in him, and it don't matter what it looks like down here. She showed me those things by example, by her example. Preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. She wasn't doing it like she was being graded. It was her life. Let me tell you something else about her. She had a brain aneurysm. She had to learn how to walk again. She had to learn how to dress herself. She had to learn how to feed herself. But I'll tell you what she didn't have to learn again. She did not have to learn how to praise Yahweh because even in the midst of all of that, the praises of Yahweh went forth from her mouth. She never had to relearn how to sing his praise. And Yahweh is the, the one who kept that in her. He's the one who restored in her that space where she could praise him even though she could not feed herself or walk, or read, she could praise Yahweh. That's how much a part of her he was, hallelujah. I want that. I want that testimony. Another way that we edify or build each other up is our conversation, our speech. In Ephesians 4.29, Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace, Yahweh's favor, to those who hear it. Uh Uh-oh. Our conversation. Is supposed to be edifying. Our conversation is supposed to build up. Our conversation is supposed to be the words that Yeshua himself would speak because it's no longer I but Christ in me. Amen. So not my words but his words should flow forth from this vessel. I want you guys to understand that the power of life and death is in the what? In the tongue. Good job Leo. We can build each other up with our words, or we can tear each other down with our words. We need to choose our words wisely. Words that encourage, that strengthen, that restore hope, that edify. The scripture says, speak the truth in love. Our words should minister grace to all that hear. Harsh words can do a lot of damage to someone who is already struggling. Do you hear what I'm saying? I was talking to a friend of mine and they were telling me about a person in their life who seemingly is really not repentant. They do this thing and they repent and then they turn around and they do it again and then they turn around and they do it again. And so this person is basically like, there's no more hope for you. They've given up on them. You're never going to change. Those harsh words can do a lot of damage. I want you to know that some people are hanging on to the faith of Yahweh by a thread. And you come along with your harsh words. You're the scissors that cuts that thread. You push them off the cliff. Instead of speaking a word of encouragement to them, instead of speaking life over them, you speak death. We have to choose our words wisely. The scripture talks about something called the sin that so easily besets me. We all have one or two or three or ten, right? 
The sin that so easily besets me. In other words, it's a sin in my life that I repent for, but then I struggle and I fall into it again. And I repent again and I struggle and I fall into it again. Right? Kind of looks like the person's friend, right? Repenting for the same old sin. But let me tell you something. Yahweh alone is the righteous judge. Yahweh knows the whole of the matter. Yahweh knows if you're struggling with that thing or not. Let me tell you something. The sin that so easily besets you is a sin that when you commit it, you are grieved in your spirit. You are broken that you have done it. You go before Yahweh in humility, asking him to forgive you and give you strength to overcome that thing. It is not willful rebellion. Willful rebellion is not the sin that so easily besets you. Willful rebellion is walking in sin and being comfortable there. Willful rebellion is doing this thing and not caring about the effect that it has on Yahweh Almighty. Not caring that you are crucifying the son of Yahweh afresh. Not caring that this thing could keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the sin that so easily besets us. When we see somebody falling into the same old sin, we can be very judgmental. We can be very critical of the person. We can speak death over their life. But what we need to do is be an encourager. What we need to do is edify them. What we need to do is keep in mind that we don't see the whole picture. And you don't know how many times that person may have gotten victory in that arena before the enemy wore them down and they fell. You see the fall, but you don't see the struggle. You cannot speak death over people and expect them to stand in this. I can't feed my kids. You're never going to change. There's no more hope for you. You're a lost cause. Because if I keep telling them that, it's just a matter of time before they receive it. And once they receive it and they believe it, it will be the truth. I am to encourage them to continue in the race, to stand strong. I'm to remind them that Yahweh is a forgiver, that there's no bondage he can't break, that there's no sin greater than him, that I can do all things through Yahshua who strengthened me, that he is faithful to forgive, and not only to forgive but to restore. And that's the word of life, hallelujah. That's the hope of glory, hallelujah. And that's what I'm supposed to speak over the brethren, building them up, not tearing them down, hallelujah. Edification takes love for one another. It takes patience. It takes long suffering. It sounds like I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Are you walking in the fruit of the Spirit? Or are you walking in your flesh? Because that's the difference between building and burning. Are you hearing me, saints? We are not only to edify in word, but also in deed. It's not just about what you say. It's about what you do. Are you willing to get in there and help your fellow brothers and sisters when you see a struggle, when you see a need that you can meet? Are you willing to get your hands dirty? Are you willing to take them by the hand and lead God and direct them into the righteous path? Are you willing to get a little invested here? Because that's what edification is, investing in one another. Amen? I was thinking about Beth's testimony last week. I've been thinking about you a lot, Beth. She was talking about how she's sitting at home. She gets a letter in the mail full of money. Money, something she needed at the time. She said that one of the saints sent it anonymously. Let me tell you something, whoever you are. You are edifying Beth. You are building up her faith. See, she wasn't looking to you. She was looking to Yahweh. She's crying out before Yahweh. Yahweh, I got a need. I don't know how this is going to 
going to work out, but I trust you, y'all, that you got a plan. I trust you that it's going to work out. I know you got this. I'm going to cast my cares on you. And that's what she did. She cast her cares on Yahweh. And oh, hallelujah, one of the saints, one of the saints felt the anointing of Yahweh and put that money in an envelope and mailed that money to her. And it was right on time, was it, Beth? Right on time, hallelujah. And what you did was you restored her faith that Yahweh hears her cry, hallelujah. Yahweh answered her prayer, hallelujah. He answered her. You were the vessel he used, but he answered that prayer, hallelujah. And she gave the glory to almighty Yahweh. And you were edifying her by your deeds, hallelujah. This is what we are called to do as the family of Yahweh. Word and deed, hallelujah. Another way we edify each other is by using our spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 and 26, 12 and 26. 12 says, what then, brethren, is the right course? Well, this, no, that's 26. 12. So it is with yourselves, since you are so eager and ambitious to possess spiritual endowments and manifestations of the Holy Spirit, concentrate on striving to excel and to abound in them in ways that will build up the church. Verse 26, what then, brethren, is the right course? When you meet together, each one has a hymn, a teaching, a disclosure of special knowledge or information, an utterance in a strange tongue or an interpretation of it. But let everything be constructive and edifying and for the good of all. The spiritual gifts are given for the edification of the body, which is the bride, which is the church, which is us. Hallelujah. Now, Paul is dealing with the Corinthian church, and they're misusing their gifts. They're playing around with it. They're tools for building up. That's what the gifts are for. See, if somebody comes to me with a word of knowledge, which is a gift of the spirit, and tells me something that I know they have no business knowing, I know that Yahweh is speaking to me. This is going to build up my faith. Yahweh is mindful of me. He's aware of my situation. He knows what I'm doing. And he sent somebody to let me know that he knows what I'm doing. That is building up my faith. When we get a prophetic word, Yahweh speaking to us in an interpretation as a witness to that word, we know that the spirit of Yahweh is present in the midst. We know that Yahweh hears our cry. We know that Yahweh is mindful of us. So the spiritual gifts are for the edification of the body. They're not for show, not for your own glory, for the edification of the saints. And this is not just limited to the spiritual gifts. This is your talents as well. Everything. I cannot tell you how many times I'll be out here in this wickedness. And I will hear a praise. You're so amazing. You're so amazing. Your love for me. I hear that. It gets me in right perspective. That brings me out of that slippery slope when I'm there sometimes. I hear how great is our God just randomly. I see something and it's just I'm in awe of his wonder and his might and his power. And I'll be like, how great is our God? You know, I start struggling with things from my past. I think about your song, Mark. Leave it all behind. Come to the well. Those songs edify me. They encourage me. They build me up. They keep me through the week. It's the same thing with the sermon. How many times does the sermon carry you through to the next Sabbath? Hallelujah. You're going through some things, and you start remembering that word. That word that was planted, that thing comes forth, and it's a preserver, a safety, a rescue, a deliverer, hallelujah. The word goes forth for the edification of the saints. But the question is, do you listen to the word? Are you paying attention to what Yahweh is saying? Or are you falling asleep, holding your head up, thinking about what you're going to do after church? Are you missing the blessing, hallelujah? The word is for your edification to build you up. 
How about testimonies? How about testimonies? How many of y'all are sitting on your testimony? Let me tell you something. Your testimony is not for you. Your testimony is for the edification of the body, which is us, the bride of Yeshua. You're sitting on your testimony. That's a way for you to edify the saints. Get up and give Yahweh his due, hallelujah. Tell us what he did for you. Somebody in here needs to hear it. Somebody needs to know he's still a deliverer, hallelujah. They need to know he's still a provider. He's still a healer. He's still a redeemer. They hear that in your testimony. When Beth gave her testimony, you know what I heard? Yahweh hears our cry, hallelujah. And he's faithful to his. And he makes provision, hallelujah. Yahweh, Yara, my provider, hallelujah. Share your testimony. It's for the benefit of the church. It serves you no purpose. You already went through it. You already know it. Tell it to us. Right? Testimonies. Another way we show how to edify each other is a show of our love. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 says, Now about food offered to idols, of course we know that all of us possess knowledge concerning these matters, yet mere knowledge causes people to be puffed up, to bear themselves loftily and be proud. But love, affection and goodwill and benevolence edifies and builds up and encourages one to grow to his full stature. Uh-uh. Knowledge without love can tear down. Knowledge puffs up, inflates your ego, binds you in the sin of pride. This is where you get judgmental and critical of other people. You notice every flaw they have, but you don't see yourself. You deceive yourself, right? The biggest lies we tell are the lies we tell ourselves. When we think we're the elite and we have arrived and we're doing everything right and you are all beneath me because I am just so holy and righteous, I am lost. That's the reality. Pride is a sin that comes before the fall. That is pride all day long. We need to learn how to use our knowledge in love. We need to remember we are one body with many parts. We are only as strong as our weakest link. We must grow together. It's not in our best interest to crush somebody's spirit. We're all either rising or falling together. We are one. I don't care if you're the head and I'm the toe. If my toe ain't right, I ain't levitating nowhere. If my toe is bound in the world, the body is stuck. It is not to your benefit to measure yourself against each other and consider people less important or less significant or less worthy than you. We have to travel the journey together. He's coming for the bride. That's all of us. The head, the tail, the toe, the finger, all of us, right? So it's in our best interest to build each other up in love. We build each other up by example, our conversation, our deeds, our spiritual gifts, our love, and our prayers. Prayer changes things. How many people can attest to that? Do you know prayer changes things? Prayer changes things, right? Cast your cares on him because he cares for you. When you see a brother or sister struggling, pray for them. Don't talk about them to each other. Pray for them. Go before the throne of Yahweh. Intercede on behalf of that person. Yahweh is in the rebuilding business. He will build them up. You don't got to worry about it. He will remove whatever needs to be removed. He will break whatever stronghold there is. Take it to the way maker. Amen? Prayer. And pray for people by name. Don't do these general prayers. You know something about somebody, you pray for that person. Yahweh, I'm coming before you right now, and I'm lifting up so-and-so. And I know their struggle, and I know you know their struggle. Let your will be done in that person's life. Whatever needs to happen for that person to seek your face, for that person to come into your presence, for that person to get freedom, 
whatever needs to happen. Y'all, I pray that right now in the name of Yeshua, hallelujah. Put that petition before the Father. This is how we edify one another. Finally, Yahweh's word. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, commit you to, to God. I deposit you in his charge, entrusting you to his protection and care. And I commend you to the word of his grace, to the commands and counsels and promises of his unmerited favor. It is able to build you up and to give you your rightful inheritance among all Yahweh's set-apart ones, those consecrated, purified, and transformed of soul. The word of Yahweh is a great tool to build each other up. This is life, saints. The word of Yahweh is life. Speak life over people. We all have people in our lives who come to us for counsel. Don't give them your counsel. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what your opinion is, how you feel about it, your life experience, and where you've been. Your counsel as a representative of Yeshua in this realm is to be biblical counsel. Yes. Biblical. The word says blah, 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 blah. I don't care what their problem is. The answer to all of life's problems is in the word of Yahweh. He's the answer, amen? Amen. He's the answer. But too many times, we don't want to offend people. We don't want people to be mad at us. So we tell them the smooth things. We don't tell them what the word of Yahweh says. You're burning them down. That's what you're doing. You're not building them up in faith. You are helping the enemy to destroy them. You are allowing them to be comfortable in their sinfulness, and they are never going to repent and come out of it if they find comfort there. Speak life over your family and loved ones, your neighbors, the people you work with. Speak life. Love them to life. Don't love them to death. Love them to life. It builds up. It edifies. Back to 1 Thessalonians where we started. Again, this is talking about the return of Yeshua. Therefore, encourage admonish, exhort one another, and edify, strengthen, and build up one another just as you are doing. Let us consciously work to edify one another so that we can all find favor in his sight, so that we can all enter into his blessing, so that we can all hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.